Okay, thank you, Tony. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us um, for this webinar on SBDC Digital Marketing Training Series. Um, my name is Brian Young. I am a business advisor with the York College SBDC. Um, this webinar is part four of a six part series. And part five will be held next Thursday. Um, that's August 19. This training series is presented by the New York SBDC at York College in collaboration with the York College Department of Business and Economics. Um, today, you will hear from our presenter about Instagram marketing tips for small businesses. Um, if you have any question, type it into the question box on your control panel, or if you have a working microphone, or if you dial in through the number, you can raise your hand by clicking on the hand icon on your control panel, and we can unmute you. And tonight's program is being recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel. I'm hoping that you will come away from this um, ready to get started with um, Instagram marketing tips for small businesses. And our presenter tonight is Tony Coleman Brown. Um, Ms. Brown has an impressive track record of working with New York City businesses, um, Queens business owners. Ms. Brown also has a lot of experience in training and capacity building for women and minority businesses. Welcome, Tony. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome everyone to the webinar tonight. Um, I'm so excited. I have to tell you guys, this is gonna be a fun and interactive uh, type of webinar. So what I would like you guys to do, if you don't mind, if you could pull out your cell phones, so um, you can like follow along with me as I do this uh, presentation. I do have slides, so I'm gonna share them now. And basically what we're gonna do tonight is, we're gonna talk about Instagram marketing and some marketing tips that you can use as a small, business owner. And uh, you heard the welcome from Brian. Uh, thank you for that, Brian. And our agenda for tonight is as follows. We're gonna talk about why Instagram first and foremost. And then we're gonna talk about what types of businesses can do well on the platform. Then we're gonna go over some small business marketing tips. And we're gonna focus on three areas. First, setting up your profile and optimizing your profile because that's very important so that you're set up for success right from the start. Some of you may already have Instagram accounts, but they may not be very well optimized and they may not very well even be a good look for your brand. So if you follow along, you'll get some tips tonight on how you can make improvements to your profile if you already have one set up. And if you don't have one set up, you will learn how to set it up properly. Then we're gonna go through some of the major functions of Instagram. <clears throat> you know, really figuring out what Instagram can do and how it can help you and your business. And then we're gonna talk about some posting strategies and some marketing ideas that you can use to really optimize your time on the platform and help your business to grow. So many of you that have been here before, you know that I'm Tony Coleman Brown. I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm an author, coach, and friend. I'm also a master trainer focusing on lead generation and I've hosted hundreds of workshops and trained thousands of people. Um, I always like to show this slide because it's my why, it's the reason why I do everything that I do. And it's because of my two daughters, Miss Sasha and Miss Taylor, and uh, they are, the wind beneath my wings. So let's get right into it. Why Instagram? 
first and foremost, Instagram has over 1 billion users. That is a lot of people. When you think about it in terms of the size of the United States, that's about three times the size of the United States. And on any given day, Instagram has over 500 million active daily users. And 70% uh, of those users are under 35 years old. Okay, so that's something for you to keep in mind. 70% is under 35 years old. So it's a relatively platform that is used, it's um, used by young people. So Instagram is known for visual content. And so when you're marketing on Instagram, most of the time you're gonna be doing visual marketing. Instagram is great for storytelling. It's also great for brand awareness, lead generation, appointment setting, and sales, and sales, okay? So what types of businesses can do well on Instagram? Well, I'll tell you all types. You know, whether you're a restaurant, hairstylist, beauty brand, products or clothing brand, a thought leader, someone that is a coach um, that's looking to get the message out about, out about your business. If you're a podcaster, even if you have a car dealership, all types of businesses can really do well on Instagram. And you may think, how is that so if you're an accountant or something like that? Well, if you're an accountant, <clears throat> or a service provider, think about the platform in this way. If you're an accountant, you're probably someone that can that's looking for clients. And you pretty much can give people some good advice on or tips on how to save money on their taxes. And you know, you can give tips on some of the new IRS laws. You can give tips on what receiving uh, any of these um, any of these checks from the federal government. What that what that's how that's going to impact your next tax return. So that's a, that's a lot of information right there. I mean, and if you've ever seen the tax laws, you know that you can probably post on Instagram every day for 365 days and you will not run out of content as it relates to tax laws or tips that you can give a small business owner. And I mean, and you know, when you really think about it, if you're an accountant, it's kind of like the gift that keeps on giving when it comes down to the IRS because, <clears throat> because of the fact that with the IRS, they constantly change the rules and change the laws every year. So you always have a fresh batch of content that you can use because you'll always be able to, you know, let people know what's new and, you know, what's going on right now and what's working right now. So you can utilize Instagram as a platform for you to deliver that information and for you to deliver that type of content. So, you know, think about what's going on in your business right now. And think about some of the upcoming promotions that you may have going on in your business. If you have a podcast, if you're a podcaster, think about some of the upcoming episodes that you may have going on in your podcast and you'll be able to actually create a strategy and a plan for your business as you learn how to navigate and how to maneuver through IG through this presentation tonight. So as I'm maneuvering through this, this presentation, what I would like you guys to do, especially if you have a pen and a pad off to the side, I would love for you to take notes and for everything that I go through tonight, for every 
area and aspect of IG. What I would like you guys to do is think about how you can implement this in your business or whatever I go through, think about what tip can I use right now? And if you have your phone near you and you are in your Instagram account, maybe some of these things you can actually implement right now. Now, the thing about Instagram is that's different is the fact that, you know, it's not one of those platforms where you can actually load it up and show everybody how to do everything on the desktop. Because IG is an app, you really want to use your phone for a lot of the content that I'm going to go through tonight. But, you know, if you have your phone in your hand, you can go through it and we can do it together. So what are some of the top brands on the platform right now? I'm talking about brands that are doing really well on IG. Well, there's an article that has like the top 15 brands and I just picked a few of them to share with you tonight. So you can get an idea and look at some of the things that they post about. So Tiffany's, Tiffany is a site. I mean, an IG, I mean, Tiffany has a great IG account and you know, they're about number eight when it comes down to the top 15 brands on IG today. So Tiffany's, Tiffany and company has 11.8 million followers. I don't know any woman that doesn't like to see that Tiffany's box, okay? So you can go to the Tiffany's account and look and see what they're doing to get some ideas for your business if you say sell jewelry or something like that. And then Glossier is a relatively new brand and they have 2.7 million followers and they're doing really well. They rank number 10 as one of the top 15 brands that are doing well on IG. And then there's this uh, drink company called Recess. And they right now have about not even 100,000 followers, but they're doing really well on their IG account. So if you have time and if you have your phone in front of you, you may want to, you know, check out those brands and see what are some of the things that they're posting about, see what they're doing their IG stories on, see what they're going live about, and maybe it'll give you some ideas. All right, so now here's some best practices as it relates to optimizing your profile. Because guys, when you first start with your Instagram account, one of the things that you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to make sure your profile is optimized right from the start. So some of the things you wanna make sure of is that when you set up your Instagram account, you wanna make sure that you have a nice profile picture, okay? And if you have one on your website, maybe you might want to have the same profile picture that's on your website. You may want to utilize it on your IG account just for continuity so that when people land on your IG account page, they'll know that they've landed in the right place. And then you want to put your name and you want to have this section really big you know, you can, you know, talk about what you're doing or, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you could put that you're an entrepreneur here. Um, put in this section your name, if you can, and try to put in this section a keyword or something that is related to your business, okay? Then in this section, you want to include a little bit of information, a nice description about what you do. And if you can incorporate a hashtag in your profile, you definitely want to do that as well. And now one of the things that frustrates a lot of people 
about LinkedIn is the fact, I mean, about Instagram is the fact that when it comes down to links, you absolutely cannot put a whole bunch of links in your Instagram profile. So if you wanna promote multiple things, you don't have any space for that. So basically one of the things that I do is I use Linktree and Linktree will allow me to put multiple links in the Linktree so that I can promote multiple things on my IG account and I can refer people to the link in my bio. And here um, in this section, I have highlight icons. And every time I share a story, I can actually save my stories to a highlight. And basically I could categorize the highlights based upon the content of the IG stories. And I can create a collection of IG stories in these highlight icons. Now, where you can go to create your highlight icons, there is actually an app. If you guys have heard of Canva, there's actually an app in the app store called Canva Stories. And you can download that app and you can create icon covers and you can design them with the same color schemes of your brand so that they really look nice on your page. So if you don't you know, have this set up, you definitely wanna do that. Make sure you use the hashtag, make sure you add Linktree and make sure you use your brand colors, especially with the highlight icons. And then if you wanna edit your profile, you can just click on the edit profile button. Now, this is what's showing now on my page because I'm logged into my own page, but this is not the way that you would normally see my page. You would see you know, a way to contact me listed here and you won't see all of these buttons and because these are, are tools that allow me to change and edit my profile. So if you click on edit your profile, you can begin to make changes. But remember I spoke about Linktree and how you can use it to create different links. So if somebody actually were to click on my Linktree, they will see that I have a link for people to join um, the waitlist for my Entrepreneur Success University. They also can download a free guide. Um, 50 ways to market and promote your business on social media. So you can promote giveaways and you can begin to build your list. And you can also promote any types of on upcoming events, whether they are webinars or grand openings or anything like that. So with the link tree, you can actually show about six different links but I would advise you not to use more than two or three because if you give people more options, then they're just going to really, you know, kind of get confused and maybe navigate away. So give them as few options as possible, but make sure that if there's anything that you've promoted in the past couple of weeks and told people to check the link in the bio, you wanna make sure that the link is in the bio, okay? And you can utilize Linktree to do that. So now if you wanna edit your profile, all you have to do is come into this section. If you have your phone open, you can click on edit profile and you'll see you can, um, you can change the name that is shown here. You can change the new username if you want to and if it's available. And you can also change the link. It's also really a good practice to use kind of like emojis if you can in your profile bio, because that just makes things fun. So in this section, you can change the, the, the um, you can change the information that's shown here, right? And then also you can, where it says page here, you can um, connect 
your Instagram account to a business page in Facebook. And if you guys have your accounts set up as business accounts or professional accounts instead of um, regular personal accounts, then you'll open yourself up to a lot of different features that you wouldn't have on a regular profile. So if you haven't converted your Instagram account to a business account, then you're gonna wanna do that, okay? So here also you can change the category. In terms of categories, um, what you uh, have available as categories is uh, whether you're educa in education, you're a blogger or something like that. So that's something that you can, um, you can choose. You can choose whether or not you wanna list yourself as a musician, um, a digital creator, a writer, um, whether you are a photographer or you're a retail store or whatever. But if it doesn't suit you, you don't have to create a category. Now for contact options, you can, um, you can figure out what you want to be displayed. Your uh, email can be displayed there, your phone number, and all of that. And I'm looking at mine now, I'm looking at my phone as well. And I'm seeing that it's really good for you to go through your profile because you're probably going to notice that there are some things that you, you might want to change, right? Because I noticed that it has the wrong um, email. And now I'm looking at the action buttons. And I don't have any button, I don't have any button selected as the action button. But if I wanted to set an action button, what would end up happening is it would let me know whether or not I want, you know, people can order food, they could book now, or they can reserve, maybe reserve a table if you're a restaurant. But if you click on the profile display, you'll see that you can uh, choose what's displayed there, whether it's the category label or whether or not your contact information, um, call or email is displayed there. So you can choose what you wanna have displayed. And then in your action buttons, like I was saying before, you have order now, you have book now or reserve. And what's really cool, like say for instance, if you are, if you are uh, say a, a coach, and you wanted people to schedule appointments or you were an accountant or a hairstylist, you can actually connect your Instagram to, if you had Acuity scheduling, you can connect it to whatever software you're using, whether it's Booksy, Appointee. So you have all of these different options to choose from. And you can actually have people go through your process, whatever it is, if you are a podcaster and you know people wanted to appear on your show, you can have them schedule an, an appointment to talk about appearing on your show. So there are a lot of things that you can do uh, with these action buttons. If you are a restaurant, you can have it actually connect to the place where people order food, whether it's food panda or whatever it is, you can, you know, connect it here. And people can reserve as well using the reserve button and the tools um, that are listed there, the different options that are listed under reserve. So some of the options under reserve, um, you have table check, table request, the fork. So that's just to name a few of the options that are available under those um, kind of like call to action buttons. But you know, Instagram has a lot of functions that you can use and there are quite a bit of them. So here's some of the things that you can do on Instagram. So if you go to your homepage, right? And you see this little plus button in at the top right of your IG page, then it'll show you all of the different options that you have because when you click on it, this screen pops up. 
So you can post, right? You can create posts on IG. You can add stories. You can highlight multiple stories. Like say for instance, if you went to a birthday party and you had a, and you did a lot of IG stories about the birthday party, you can create a collection of those high um, of those IG stories in the highlight section and create a highlight of that particular event. So say for instance, like when I host my small business boot camp. I mean, I could create highlights from those events and just create multiple stories and put them together in a highlight and put together an icon so that people can come back and they could look at those highlights and you know see some of the things that have been going on with, you know, with my network, right? You can also go live. You can post video, pre-recorded video on IGTV. Those videos can be a little bit longer. So if you have videos on your phone, you can upload them to IGTV because the one thing you should know about your Insta stories is the fact that they must be short, 15 seconds. So after 15 seconds, it'll keep going. But what it'll do is it'll show your videos in 15 second increments, one after the other. So you guys know what that looks like. Then you could go live, which is super cool, right? And then you can make rec recommendations uh, for people and you know, kind of like act as a guide. If you click on that, you'll see you can recommend other people's pages, restaurants, and things like that. But you can also follow, unfollow, tag, and you can send direct messages. You guys know I always say that it goes down in the DM. So basically, you know, when it comes down to um, when it comes down to IG, you can actually, you know, have serious conversations going on in the in the DMs, and you can make a lot of connections that way. And that's one of the that's one of the things that we actually suggest that you do because believe it or not so many business deals happen in dms so um i always think about and refer to the story of the central park five and one of the members of the central park five how he was able to get ava duvenet to uh create the movie is he slid in her dm and he actually asked her what project is she working on next? And she was just kind of like, I don't know, you know, and he said, well, I have a suggestion for you. And that's when he suggested that she created, create a story of the Central Park Five. So that's an example. And there's so many of them guys where there have been real success stories that have happened because people have slid in someone's DM. So that's truly, truly an important aspect of IG. So you can post on IG, you can post pictures, you can post videos, um, some things that tend to work pretty well on Instagram are quotes or tips. And a lot of times what people will utilize their posts for as a way of also telling stories. So for example, if you can give somebody a tip and maybe put together five Instagram posts and load them all up, you know, with like the, the last one being first and, and once it's loaded up on the platform, when people scroll through and, and you know swipe left, it'll read as a story. So you can upload 10 pictures and or five and people can just swipe left and really you know get a good, good story or a good uh, section of a uh, uh, collection of tips. So that's something that's really cool. And then you can um, also always add a story. So what you want to do is you can press on that little plus sign and you click on story. And then what will happen is you'll see this button that will pop up 
And with the story, you'll see along the bottom, there are a whole bunch of different filters that you can add into your story. And so you can use the different filters and see what they will look like. Um, you can create a boomerang. You can change the layout. So there's a lot that you can do with your IG stories. But you want to, you know, definitely take the time to plan these things out so that you can, you know, maximize the use of your story. When it comes down to creating stories, what I will tell you is you have to think in terms of as it relates to your business, what's happening now or what will be happening in the future that's newsworthy. You know, like the, think like a news reporter, think like somebody that's a, a PR rep. And if they wanted to really, you know, like create awareness about your company or create awareness about your product, what would they have to, what would they, you know, what would they talk about? You know, think about a funnel, right? When it comes down to a funnel, when it comes down to a customer's journey, you know, there's the awareness phase, which is the phase at the top of the funnel. There's the interest, because once people become aware that you exist, then they become interested. And then once they become interested, then they start making buyer's decisions. And then at, at that point, they're going to decide whether or not they're going to buy or whether or not they're going to just stay connected and maybe buy later. So when it comes down to creating your stories, you want to think about where the customer is at in their buying decision. And you really want to take them through the buyer's process and the customer's journey. So usually it's they, they become aware first then they become interested, then they make a decision, and then they take actions. So I'm sure you guys have heard this, A-I-D-A, A-I-D-A, something like that. So A-I-D-A, that's usually the customer's journey. They become aware, then they become interested, then they make a decision, and then they take action. So think about that and think about where the people that will see your content, where they are in terms of their buying decision. And, you know, I can tell you that most, most of the content that you're going to create is going to be related to awareness. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I said that you can create stories and then you can actually highlight your stories. So when you click on story highlights after, you know, you press this little button here, um, the plus sign on your IG page, then you press on story highlights. And what's going to happen is it's going to actually show you all of your uh, highlights that you've done in the past. And you can just pick, you know, the ones that you want to go under a particular story highlight. And then what you can do is you can give that highlight a title and you can change the cover. So then it'll look just like this. You see how these highlight icons look on my page? They coincide with the brand, they're the brand colors, and they look pretty good. So you can collect a bunch of stories and put them together in a highlight. And, and what's cool about this and as a business owner, when you wanna think about when you're creating your highlights, you wanna think about what do you want people to kind of see when they come to your page to kind of understand what you do and what you're about. And when you have these story highlights, that's a good, a good way to do that. So, you know, like I give a lot of motivation. So I have a motivation tab, you know, and all of that. So you really want to think about that. So if you, let's take, you know, like if you were an accountant. So if you were an accountant, you might want to have a, a highlights tab that um, covers tax tips. Um, you might want one on financial reporting. And you might want another one on 
um, you know, maybe savings or getting your, you know, or organizing for tax season or something like that, or organizing your finances. But that's just to give you an idea of how you may want to organize these icons, which will be a collection of stories, right? So, all right. So there are a multitude of different types of stories that you guys can create. You can create polls. And if you have your phone in front of you, you can just simply go to the plus sign and you can click on it. And then you can click on story, right? And what's going to happen is you can click on the drop down arrow and you can click on um, create. And if you click on create, which is the little drop down arrow, it's going to give you all of these different options, right? So you'll get the option to just put some text. You'll get the option to wish someone happy birthday. If you wanted to add a GIF to your story, you could do that. If you wanted to talk about what you're watching, what particular TV show or something like that, you could do that. If you wanna ask a question, you can do that. Or if you wanted to take a poll, you can do that as well. So like a yes, no question is almost like a poll or you know, ask me a question. You might want your audience to ask you a question about a particular topic or something like that. And then you may wanna go on a live and answer those questions. So that's pretty cool. And the cool part is, you know, you could create a poll, you could create questions and you can change the look and feel of it by clicking on this little uh, button down here at the bottom to, you know, make the colors and everything coincide with your brand. So now if you have videos, like you might've created a whole bunch of videos on YouTube and some of those videos may be really appropriate for your IG account. Well, what you can do is you can take some of those videos and you can um, download them and then you can actually upload them to your IGTV. And, um, you know, that's really cool too, because if you have a series of videos about something that's relevant to the audience, you might want to upload them to IT, IGTV to give your audience an opportunity to really take some time and really engage in your content. All right. And then you can go live. Okay. So that little button right here at the top right again, you can click on that. And if you click on it, you can click the live tab. And then all of a sudden you're gonna get this live button. But what's pretty cool is you can use filters for your live as well. And it's almost similar to Snapchat. So it's pretty cool. And uh, you wanna have a real strategy though, if you're gonna be going live on Instagram, you know, you wanna have a strategy for that. And it's almost like how people are using Clubhouse you know, people set up dates and times to go on Clubhouse. And then um, when they go on Clubhouse, what they do is they'll, you know, tell people, okay, um, I'm about to now go live on Instagram. So why don't you head over to my IG account? And, you know, on Clubhouse, your IG account is connected to your Clubhouse account and you could pull people over from Clubhouse to your IG, which is, is, is pretty cool. Um, what's, what's really cool about um, Instagram though is the fact that it allows you to really engage with your uh, audience when you go live. So you can you know, see what's going on in the comments, the comments are flow through, you can really, really engage with your audience when you go live on, on Instagram. Uh, and if you do it consistently, you will begin to attract people consistently to your page. So going live is, you. I can do a whole training on going live by itself, but that's definitely a tactic that if you start it, you want to be consistent with it. 
Now, you know, the three bars uh, to the right of your, of your plus sign on your phone, if you click on the three little bars, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see settings, archive, your activity, insights, and you're also gonna see QR codes. You can see any, um, any IG posts that you've saved any of your close friends, you can create a close friends list. But what's really cool is you can create, you know, click on that QR code. Now, if you guys have your phone um, available and open right now, what I'd like you guys to do is I'd like you to open up your camera and I'd like you to hold it right up to your computer right now and hold it over that QR code and see how it says open in Instagram. And when you open that QR code in Instagram, it's gonna take you right to my page. And what you can do is you can follow me on that page right now. But what this is, why this is cool is if you're doing a presentation, you know, I, I'll tell you some of the things that you can do. You can actually include this in your presentations and have people sign up right there on a spot, you know, to go right to your page and you can have your link tree and tell them exactly how to get maybe your freebie or something like that. Or you can take that same QR code and you can strategically place it in your, um, in a background for your Zooms. And when you do your Zooms, you can have the QR code in the background. And you can tell people while you're doing your Zoom to take their cameras and point it at the QR code in the background. And if they point it at the QR code that's, that's behind you while you're speaking, they can connect directly with your Instagram. And I mean, and that's something, that's, that's something like if you're not utilizing that, you definitely want to do it because that's just something like that super cool that you are going to want to do. So um, IG has some great insights. So you know that when you go to your account, you can actually go to the home setting um, of your account and go to those three bars. And when you go to those three bars, you can go to the insights and you can get great insights about your page. You can get it for the past seven days. You can actually set up a custom segment. If you wanna do it for 14 days or 30 days, you can do that as well. And then, you know, you have other tools and resources where you can look at your dashboard and really see everything that's kind of going on with your page. If you kind of click on those three bars and go in the settings, you'll have the ability to actually update your messages and you can take your um, Instagram direct messages and you can begin to like customize that. You can um, create auto replies, you can uh, create selfie stickers, um, and just really begin to customize that. So let's see, it looks like I have a question. Oh, somebody is saying great presentation. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Evelyn, I appreciate that. But yeah, so I mean, it, that's really something cool that you, you may wanna do, but all you have to do to make those changes in your DM is go into your homepage and go into the settings. Um, and you can go into those three bars to the right of the plus sign, and it's going to give you your insights. It's going to give you all of this other information, which is really, really cool. Now, let's talk about strategy, okay? So basically, you know that people can find you on Instagram based upon hashtags, so one of the things that you might want to do is begin to use your hashtags very, very strategically. Um, you want to make sure that you're using hashtags that are related to your uh, industry and your business. So if, you know, like for me, I mean, I'm hashtag women in business or hashtag entrepreneurs or hashtag empowerment, things like that, or hashtag social media. 
I mean, you know, those are some of the hashtags that I may want to use. But what you might want to do is do some strategic research, either you or an intern, and research what hashtags you want to use. Then you want to tell stories, you know, um, you know, people want to see kind of like the behind the scenes and they want to see what's going on. So you want to make sure that you tell stories. So utilize your IG stories. And let me tell you what's super cool. When you connect your IG accounts with your Facebook accounts, the things you post on IG, you can also post to Facebook. The things you post in your IG story, you can also post on your Facebook story. So what's really cool about this is that you can kill two birds with one stone, but you wanna know what's even cooler guys? You can even connect this to your Twitter account. So you can, you can post from IG to Facebook and Twitter. So basically you're just killing like three birds in one stone and cut, you know, you know, cutting your, uh, or increasing, I should say, not cutting your productivity, increasing your productivity by utilizing one platform to promote to all of these different um, other platforms. Also use story prompts, okay? And I'm gonna give you a few story prompts right now. I have quite a few of them, um, 400 to be exact, but I'm just going to give you a few of them on the next slide. You can poll your audience, you know, like if you're looking to change your logo, you can say, uh, is this, is this a better logo compared to the one I have now? Yes or no. Or which one should I choose? This one or that one or something like that, you know, so you can poll your audience. You want to do that. And that, you know, increases engagement. You can also tag influencers when you post about them. So I've attended the Wendy Williams show and I took a picture with Wendy and I will post it and tag Wendy. I've had her team kind of respond back before, but that's also a great way to get influencers to notice you. Also, if you want to grow your following, you could grow your following by posting other people. So if you are, say, for instance, doing like a keto diet IG page, and there are other people that are posting pictures of their before and after, you can um, tag them and post their before and after pictures. And that's a great way for you to build your following by tapping into other people's followings, right? You can also use paid ads. I mean, you know, one of the big things that you're going to see if you have your account set up as a business account is when you go to the home page and when you click on any one of your posts, you'll see a boost post. So you can, you know, boost a post, especially if you're doing a giveaway. I would definitely do that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that as well. So you can use paid ads. Like I said, you can repost other people's content. We already talked about highlights. Make announcements. Like if you've uh, uploaded a new podcast episode to your podcast, make an announcement about it. If you've created a new blog post, make an announcement about it. These are good things to highlight on your, in your stories. You know, organize a giveaway. And then also you want to periodically unfollow accounts and you want to periodically follow some accounts as well and uh, ask people to save your content. You know, like if, if this is say things like if this is resonating with you, then, you know, click that save ribbon because you're going to want to come back to it. And then most importantly, you definitely want to have fun. So when it comes down to some story prompts or some prompts that you might want to use when you're posting, this is just some examples, right? Um, it's like five predictions for your future if you join blank today. So if you're offering a course and say the course is on list building, okay, you can give people five predictions. One of the predictions could be your list is going to grow. Um, your audience will grow. You can say things like you'll be able to make money while you sleep. Um, you can make money at the click of a send button. You know, um, 
you're going to walk away feeling empowered or something like that. You know what I mean? And, and those could be like, that could be something that you can say in your IG stories, or it could be something that you can say in a collection of posts, you know, and you can put all of the posts like all in one as pictures. So people could just swipe left, right? Um, one of the things is here are all your payment options to join blank, right? Whatever your offer is. So these are what I would consider to be examples of the type of posts that could generate income for you, right? Um, so these are just some examples uh, definitely three ways to know if you'll resonate with my teaching style. That's something that if you're offering a course, you could definitely say something like that and then talk about your teaching style so that people could, you know, really, you know, like engage with that. But these are just some examples of story prompts just to get your juices flowing, right? And um, definitely, if you guys uh, have any questions, I'm going to give you about five minutes or so to ask questions. But if you're looking for a specific help, you can definitely email York SBDC at sbdc at york.cuny.edu, or you can call 718-262. 2880. So Jeanette wants to know, so IG is best used as a download to your phone. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's the best way to use it, even though you can still like use other schedulers and things like that to upload content to Instagram. I still consider the best use to be your phone because there's so many things you can do on the phone that you can't do um, on a desktop, like all of the different filters and all of that stuff. I, Instagram is an app. It's an app and it's definitely made to um, be used with your phone. It's, it's, it doesn't work nearly as well on a desktop as it does when you use your phone. So I hope that answers your question. So are there any other questions that you guys may have? I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop my screen share and say thank you. Thank you so much for um, being on the presentation. And Jeanette said, yes, that answered her question. But I'm going to stop my screen share so that I can... Um, you know, get any questions that you guys may have, you can uh, raise your hand or you can actually ask a question in the chat. So it's, it's completely up to you. Um, we have quite a few people that definitely joined us later on and we appreciate you being here. But if there are no other questions, Brian, I'll turn it, turn it back over to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Great job. And if we don't have any more questions, we can go ahead and wrap things up. Um, thank you, Tony, for presenting today. And thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, we will send you an email with instructions on how to sign up as an SBDC client so we can continue to help you further. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you, Tony. Thanks. Bye, everybody.